Baker Botts LLP provides podcasts for educational purposes only. They are not legal advice and are not intended to establish an attorney client relationship. This communication may constitute attorney advertising. Welcome to the Environmental Evolutions Podcast, where we explore the changing landscape of environmental law and policy. I'm your host, Megan Burge, coming to you from sunny San Diego, California. On this episode, I am turning the microphone over to two of my most technically savvy partners, Kent Mayo and Martha Thompson, to provide you with the fast facts on a newly proposed rule that would considerably expand the scope of EPA's regulation of coal combustion residuals also known as coal ash. I've let Kent and Martha know that they are on the clock today. So, in 15 minutes or less, here are your fast facts on EPA's proposed CCR legacy rule. Thank you, Megan. Martha and I wanted to talk today about some key points regarding the CCR legacy rule that EPA proposed in May of this year. We'll say this several times during the podcast, but this proposed rule, which we're going to refer to as the CCR legacy rule or the 2023 proposed rule, if it's finalized in something close to its current form, would constitute a massive potential expansion of federal regulation of coal ash deposited at active and former power plant facilities. We're going to start today with a quick level set regarding what led up to EPA's proposal. Then Martha's going to jump in with three fast facts about the proposed rule. And I'll finish up with three things companies can consider doing as EPA moves towards a potential final rule in 2024. Let me start with a short background of the CCR rule and how that history set the stage for the proposed rule we're talking about today. EPA published its first national regulations in 2015 addressing the management and disposal of coal combustion residuals, which we also call coal ash or CCR. The rule was promulgated under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, which we call RECRA, which focuses on regulation of solid and hazardous waste management. As part of the rule, EPA determined that CCR was a solid waste, but not a hazardous waste purposes of setting management requirements. 2015 rule was targeted at CCR units and active facilities. These CCR units primarily included CCR landfills and CCR ponds or impoundments, which hold an incredibly large amount of waste in most circumstances. Active facilities were those power plants that were generating power as of 2015. The 2015 CCR rule imposed various requirements on these CCR units, including operating requirements, design criteria, groundwater monitoring, corrective action, and closure and post-closure care, all of which are intended to ensure that these units did not present an unreasonable risk to human health or the environment under RECRA. EPA has gone on to revise this rule several times, and in 2016, as part of what's called the WIN Act, Congress expanded EPA's authority to enforce the CCR regulations while also allowing EPA to approve and set up state and federal permitting programs. The D.C. Circuit also vacated portions of the rule in 2018 and requiring further amendments to the CCR rule that EPA has been addressing over time. So the bottom line here is there have been a lot of moving pieces over the last eight years on the regulation of CCR at power plants, but the rule was always reasonably clear in exempting multiple categories of units or CCR deposits that occurred prior to the 2015 rule. Martha, do you want to talk about what's changed in the new proposal? Thanks, Kent. I'm going to give a high-level overview of the proposed 2023 legacy rule. Just to give a little more relevant background, the original 2015 CCR rule that Kent summarized contained several exemptions. The two primary exemptions being, one, there was an exemption for inactive facilities. Those are power plants that previously generated power but were retired before 2015. And then there was a second exemption at active power generating facilities for landfills that ceased waste receipt before 2015, as well as for impoundments that ceased waste receipt and were fully dewatered before 2015. So I think Ken said this before, but the 2023 proposed rule is basically the CCR rule part two. As proposed, it would implement a massive expansion of the federal CCR rule to hundreds, if not thousands, of additional areas where CCR was deposited prior to the 2015 rule, but for areas that were not previously covered under the 2015 CCR rule. Generally speaking, the proposed rule contains two primary parts. 
The first part is the legacy rule part, which it finalized with subject inactive surface impoundments at inactive generating facilities to federal regulation. These are also referred to as legacy ponds, which is why this rule is sometimes referred to as the legacy rule. The second part is the CCRMU part. CCRMU stands for CCR Management Unit. The CCRMU part of the rule, if finalized, would regulate any accumulation of ash ever placed at a regulated facility that is not already subject to regulation as a CCR unit. So what regulations would apply to legacy ponds and CCRMUs? If the 2023 proposed rule is finalized as is, legacy units would be subject to most of the existing CCR rule requirements and CCRMUs would be subject to groundwater monitoring, corrective action, and closure and post-closure requirements. One final note on timing. Currently, EPA is under a consent order to finalize the 2023 proposed rule by May of 2024. So if EPA proceeds with this rulemaking, we'll start to see requirements phased in in late 2024. So with that background, we'll turn to Three fast facts to know about the proposed rule. Fast fact number one. We've said that before, but really think this is worth underscoring. The 2023 proposed rule is basically the CCR rule part two. It would double or more the scope of units that fall under EPA's federal CCR regulations. Fast fact number two. This is largely a retroactive rulemaking. The CCR regulations are promulgated under RICRA, which generally focuses on ongoing and prospective waste management, while its counterpart CERCLA addresses past waste management and regulation. But the 2023 proposed legacy rule, although proposed under RICRA, is much more retroactive and retrospective than the original CCR rule. The original CCR rule generally focused on active units, um, but the 2023 proposed rule focuses on closed and inactive units, many of which have been closed or capped for years or even decades under state programs. Fast fact number three, the CCRMU definition is extremely broad and captures essentially any accumulation of CCR that was placed at a regulated facility at any time. So as proposed, EPA is not exempting beneficial use of CCR even though there were several exemptions for beneficial use of CCR under the 2015 rule. This means that beneficially reused CCR at power plant facilities, for instance, in hull roads, pond construction, soil amendment, and various other placements around a site, could be regulated as CCR MUs. Ultimately, this would be a sweeping expansion of the federal CCR regulations and could have widespread impacts on the operations of power plant facilities that have reused CCR on site. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kent to talk about three steps companies can take to address and prepare for the final legacy rule. Thank you. I'm going to jump in right away on the first one, which is this 2023 proposed CCR rule is currently in the middle of a public comment period which runs through July 17. So if you're concerned about the specific impacts this rule may have on your company or your facility, you can submit individual comments or work with a coalition to submit group comments by that date to the regulations.gov website. EPA has indicated in public discussions on the proposed rule that they are open to considering modifications based on public comments. So if there's sufficient evidence to support requested changes, we might actually see EPA do something to this rule. Second, as Martha discussed, the proposed rule, if finalized, could pull in a wide range of additional CCR management areas into the scope of federal CCR regulation. As the rule is proposed, EPA is requiring power companies to complete an investigation of their own facilities to identify potential regulated units. The proposed rule would require companies to act very quickly and complete and certify a facility investigation within nine months of the rule going final and three months of the rule becoming effective. Some units may be readily identifiable, like recently closed landfills. However, others may be less apparent and require digging back through facility records and or interviewing facility personnel. Though companies will be dealing with a lot of uncertainty as they await the final rule, they should consider starting the facility evaluation process well in advance of that potential final rule. This advanced evaluation can help to identify the scope of the potential regulatory risks and to help develop a compliance plan to balance all of the potential requirements that could be included in the final rule. Third, 
As proposed, the legacy rule creates significant ambiguity regarding what would be included as a CCR management. For, for instance, EPA states in the preamble to the proposed rule that de minimis amounts of CCR are not within the scope of the CCRMU definition, but the agency does not define what de minimis means in the rule. Accordingly, some areas may require a close look and a potential legal assessment to determine the applicability of the rule requirements. Given these questions and the potential for dispute with EPA or enforcement in the future, companies should consider conducting an initial facility investigation in conjunction with legal counsel in order to provide potential legal privilege protections for internal investigations and evaluations. Those are our three fast facts and the three things companies can do in response to the proposed CCR legacy rule. Thank you for having us, Megan. Well, there you have it, listeners. For more information on the CCR legacy proposal, a link is available in the episode notes. If you have questions about the proposed rule and its implications for your business, you can find contact information for Kent and Martha in the episode notes as well. With that, I'm Megan Birch. Thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for listening to this BakerBots podcast. BakerBots has the experience, knowledge, and people to solve our clients' most significant legal issues. For more information on BakerBots practices, please visit us at bakerbots.com. This presentation is provided by BakerBots LLP for educational and informational purposes only. It is not legal advice and is not intended to establish an attorney-client relationship. Under the rules of certain jurisdictions, this communication may constitute attorney advertising.